So I have bet on every single match at the US Open tennis tournament this week. Now in some circles that would make me a problem gambler, but in fact the reason that I'm doing this is to learn exactly how to profit from betting or trading on tennis. It's something I've done for a number of years and if you want to learn what I'm doing and why, then just watch the rest of this video. So it may seem a bit strange placing a bet on every single event or sport that you're actively looking at, uh, but it teaches you an awful lot. And in fact, it teaches you a lot more than you can get at from this historical data. I'm not a strong advocate for historical data. It's worth looking at and playing around with. But very often, all historical data tells you is that the market is perfect and that you can't make any money. And therefore, you know, actively participating in the market and placing bets in the market will give you a lot of the clues and information that you need. From a traditional betting perspective, it will give you an indicator as to whether there are biases within the market. And I can tell you that there are. Um, but, you know, you're looking for value in a market. You need to find where value is. And when you start act actively betting in a market, you'll begin to see those sort of things pop out. But from a Betfair trading perspective, you're looking at something slightly different. You're looking for an opportunity where that a, a position will be in profit at some point during the sports event that you're actively trading. And this is where this um, tactic comes into its own, because basically you'll place a bet and you'll see all of those key points within the event where it would have been profitable, where you could have traded in and out and all of those sort of things. So I know over the long term, even if I've got no skill, I'm going to more or less break even minus a bit of commission. Um, and therefore, I don't fear doing this in any particular market. There are certain ways that you should do this and certain ways that you shouldn't. But I don't fear placing sort of random bets into the market because I know that I'm not going to lose large amounts of money. But I do know that it's going to give me loads of valuable information. So let's have a look at some of the information that it throws off. So before we go in and look at the results um, of what I've done, I need to show you exactly what I'm doing. So I'll go into a tennis match. You can see we've got Varinka v Sinner here. And I will basically uh, go in and lay the favorite. So the favorite here is Yannick Sinner. He's priced at 114 and Stan is based at, uh, he's priced at eight. So if I go in and lay Yannick Sinner, I will lose money if he goes on to win. And you can see at his price, it's quite sure, he probably will win. And you're sort of thinking, well, that's a bit daft, isn't it? But you'll see why I do this in a second. But one of the reasons is that I can actually fix my liability. So you can see here I've entered a max liability of 100. And you can see that means if um, Yannick Sinner goes on to win, I lose 100. But my payoff, uh, if Stan goes on to win, is quite variable. I can win a lot more money on that. And the reason that I do this is if I'm looking at value and I'm looking at getting an edge over the market in some way or another, it will come out in terms of my payoff because the liability I take is fixed, but the payoff is variable according to the price of the outsider. And that will end up um, making me money over time if I'm finding value. But there's another important reason that we're doing this that I will show you in a second. Now, of course, you don't need to go in with stakes of 100. You could go in if you want with a, a lower liability of even a pound and you can still achieve the same effect. You will still learn. Um, so yeah, don't go in with crazy stakes. Use something much, much smaller uh, while you're trying to understand what you're doing and exactly what you're looking at. So yeah, but basically this is what I do on each individual match. But of course I don't do it on the Betfair interface. On BetAngel I can do it with one click if I use lay by liability. And of course I can completely automate it, which is what I do. I don't go through each of these individual matches doing this. BetAngel just does it completely automatically. Uh, but yeah, fundamentally speaking, this is what I'm doing here. So you can see how I laid to a fixed liability and these are the results from the first three days uh, at the US Open. Uh, so yeah, if we look, you can see uh, the bets were placed on the 28th and they run up until about the 30th. I'm continuing to do this, but this is where I cut it off for the purposes of this video. And this information that you see in front of you, you can download from Betfair. If you go to the My Account area on Betfair, betting activity and betting history, it will download all of the bets that you've placed and it will give you this information that I've highlighted here and a bit more. Um, but I've just tidied it up for the purpose of this video so that I can illustrate things. So I've created this, but the stuff on the left was just downloaded straight into a spreadsheet off of Betfair. And, and that's how I analyze it. That's how I do it. You can do the same too. But you can see here um, on the first match, the odds were 116. So if you laid to £100 liability, your payoff would be 625. But in fact, uh, this player went on to win. 
So we lost. So basically we lost £100 because we laid this favourite at 116 to a liability of £100. You can see down here though, we laid this player at 1.3 and this player lost. So we won £333. So you can see after five matches here, we were down slightly overall. We were down 60, uh, roughly £67. But basically the lower price that you lay at, the bigger the potential payoff. But of course, if the market is efficient, then you know that this player has a really good chance of winning, which is what this IP stands for. The market's saying this player has a 97% chance of winning. And lo and behold, she did win. So we basically lost a hundred pound on there. But if she didn't win, we would have won over 3000 pound. It's important to note that for what I'm gonna show you next. But you can see there's a, a mixture of results in here, but I've got the cumulative total on the right hand side and the cumulative total is adding up all of these. So we lost 100 on the first, on the second, third and fourth, but then we won some money. So our cumulative total is just uh, below break even. Then we won the next match and the next one. So suddenly we're in profit and then we lost and so on. So you can see that the cumulative value going up from there. But basically we ended up laying 147 matches, not all at once, I should state. And we did that for a hundred pound liability. And therefore, if we did that, we would have basically won um, £2,808 uh, on these first three days of the US Open. So basically, favourites won less often than they should have done, or I should say outsiders won more often than you would think. And um, this is something that uh, we've seen in the first few days of the US Open tennis. And you've probably seen me highlight this if you're watching me on social media. Uh, incidentally, the total stakes here um, is the amount of money that we have staked at some point or we've had at risk. Uh, but it's not all at once because of course you matches go off at different times. So when one match finishes, then you can start on another. You don't have to put all of this money down. It's a much, much smaller total than that. And of course, as I've just illustrated to you, if you want to mess around and play with this concept, then you can use much, much smaller stakes. So yeah, it's up to you how you want to do it. But if you went into the US Open on the first three days uh, this year, by laying the favorite, you would have won 2,808 pound and 72 pence before commission, I should state. This is the data that you get on this spreadsheet is always before commission. You can always download the betting PL spreadsheet, which will show you this uh, value net of commission. But yeah, basically at the start of the US Open this year, uh, laying the favorite was a really good idea. So we've had a look there from a betting perspective. You'd sort of expect over the long term to, if you do stuff at random, to break even minus a bit of commission, as I have said before, but you may uncover other little biases uh, within the market. And, you know, there has been uh, various tournaments and events, and, you know, you could do this on any sport um, that begin to show out those particular biases. But it just turns out that we've been on the right side of the market, certainly this year at the US Open. However, where it really comes into its own is when you're Betfair trading. I have done a number of videos on things that I call profit graphs, and this basically plots the, the progression of a trade through an entire match to show you the key points within a match and how much money you could have made at certain points, because that gives you a very strong indicator as to exactly what you should be doing. And we had an excellent example at the US Open this week. So the way that I learned to trade tennis on Betfair was to use a thing called a profit graph. And it's, it's quite simple to understand because when we start a match, we're laying to a set liability. So over here, you can see on the Djokovic match last night, we opened our account with a lay bet with a hundred pound liability. But of course, as the match progresses, the odds shift and change to reflect the underlying score. And what you can see on this graph here is the score running along the bottom here. So for example, here, it's two sets to one uh, to Djokovic's opponent. And uh, this is the start of the third set, basically. And then the line that you can see going all the way up here and all over the place is basically the amount of profit. Because if um, Djokovic started the match at 102, uh, we laid him at 103. His price ticked in ever so slightly before the start of the match. But by laying him at 103, our potential profit um, was the best part of £3,000 or so. And as a consequence, it's that potential profit that changes over the course of the match. The liability always remains £100, but the potential profit that we've got doesn't. It moves around to reflect the change in the odds, the scoreline, um, and how much that, that amount was when we laid at the start of the match. So the benefit that we've got here is if we laid Djokovic at 103 
for a hundred pound liability, uh, then potentially we could win three thousand three hundred if he goes on to lose the match. But of course, Djokovic is unlikely to lose the match. But when we're trading, we don't care about that. What we care about is the movement in odds during the match. So you can see over here, we started with a liability of £100. But as his opponent uh, managed to hold on to his serve and then eventually got a break, you can see that we started to move into a decent profit uh, by the fourth game of that first set. When he won that first set, you can see we're already at a decent amount within the market. But look what happened when he won that second set. All of a sudden, you can see that from our £100 liability at the start of this match, we were actually out to win the best part, or just short of, £3,000. We could have traded out at this point for a near £3,000 profit on Djokovic. At that point, we could have hedged the trade, or we could have let it run. It's entirely up to us what we want to do at that particular point. But what the profit graph is showing you is how that amount moved over the course of the match and where those key moments were within the match. So you can see Djokovic got the next set back, but you can see that we could have still traded out for the best part of a thousand pound or 10 times what our original liability was. And this is where the trading a tennis match really comes into its own because you can see here, there's just a vast range of options here of how to profit. And all we've done is use this hundred pound liability to start with but we could have actually traded out for near on a £3,000 profit at the height of this particular match. And even if we missed that, we could have traded out at other points within the match. Um, but even at the, if we traded out after the first break or the first set, you can still see there was an opportunity to earn many times our liability on this match by actually actively cashing out at some point during the match itself. So yeah, it's worth creating a profit graph. And we do have instructions on the forum as to how to create these using BetAngel. But you can see the vast opportunity that is created on tennis matches by actively trading them rather than betting them. We're not concerned about the outcome of the match because actually Djokovic did go on to win this match in the end. So we started with a liability of 100. And if we wouldn't have traded out, we would have actually ended up with a £100 loss on this match. But look at the amount of opportunities that we would have had to trade out for a profit. And in fact, you know, at its peak, this was 20 or 30 times our initial liability. That would have covered you for a whole large, huge number of matches um, where you weren't able to do this. And in essence, this is the benefit of Betfair trading. You get a vast range of opportunities to trade out for a profit, very often for many multiples of that initial liability. Um, and that is why I prefer to trade tennis matches. But in order to get this profit graph, um, you would actually need to put something in the market for BetAngel to be able to plot the path that the match followed, uh, which is why we go in and we lay all of these matches to not only get an idea on if we can see value or biases in the initial betting market, but more necessarily to see how much you could have traded out for as the match progressed. So we're looking here at tennis. But I do this sort of thing on every single market, on football, on racing, tennis, any sport, and especially sports I don't understand or haven't actively traded before, I would just put positions into the market and see what happens. And it seems a little bit odd because you'd think that you, you know, if you bet at random, then you would lose money. But you don't because if you frame it correctly, and then there's no reason why you should lose that much money because ultimately the market should be reasonably efficient. And you, you know, you'll have to pay a little bit of commission on that but the sort of information that you can get by doing that uh, is significantly valuable and it will teach you a lot about the way that the market works. It will allow you to become much more comfortable in understanding exactly what happens and why. So yeah, if you want to get a really good grip on any individual sport from a betting or a trading perspective, that's exactly how I recommend that you do it. A bit of commission on a betting exchange. And even if I were to place a traditional bet, um, <laughs> <laughs>